Okay, so go up in a second. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am GNG with GNG's Kitchen, and I'm super excited to be here today. Please apologize, my little dog. He decided to there's the wind outside and he's got a bark. So he will be done in a second. So welcome to our first ever cooking with me today. I am GNG with GNG's Kitchen. Today I am going to show you how to make some green acorn with the vinaigrette, honey vinaigrette. The reason why we chose Asley and I've Acorn is because the holiday is here upon us. And what is everybody talking about it? Acorn, acorn, squash, butternut, you name it, it's acorn. So this is what I'll be making. I'm going to turn it over to my beautiful friend, Aslan. Hi, Aslan. What are you going hey. to prepare for us today? Hey, Gianji. It's so good. So, so good to be doing this new series with you. So I've got, can you hear those fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a dog, you have the fireworks. Hey, that's perfect. So, so, so what's today? Today's the 7th of November, but it's the weekend. So we've just had Guy Fawkes on the 5th of November where we let off fireworks to celebrate Parliament not being burned down way back when. So fireworks are still going on. So pardon me. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. That's awesome. Now I'm going to be doing butternut squash, probably my favorite squash. So all I'm going to be doing is slicing, scooping, slicing, roasting. But the difference here is that we make a spicy basil oil um, that we will be um, spreading all over the squash, roast it and serving it with some burrata in the middle. Oh, burrata, my favorite. I wish I was right next door right now doing this because I could come over and scoop it. So you're making one of my, one of, your favorite recipe today, so I'm excited about it. So shall I start with this little puppy right here? Absolutely. Okay, so this is the green acorn, as you can see, it's green, and is one of the vegetables that nobody likes to use because it's so hard to cut, to cut actually. So what, I, what I've done, and is something, a tip that is on my website um, there, it's with the recipe, is I parboil it. That's mean I put them on a pan of, hot, of water, cover it, bring it to a boil and let it down. And let, once it boils it, turn the heat off and let it sit for five minutes. It makes it very soft. And I'm gonna show you in two seconds how easy it is to cut it. You just put it flat down, put your knife down and ah, it's cut. Usually it takes forever. So this is one of the little tips that I've learned throughout the years. And that's what I do. So. We get to so enjoy that, this little that squash. Cuts down, that cuts down on the roasting time too then, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. It takes literally 50 to 20 minutes in the oven once this is done. And one great thing too, you can make it a couple of days ahead of time, put it in a refrigerator, bring it out at, uh, at room temperature, and then finish the cooking process, which means during Thanksgiving, which this is going to be um, one of your main dish, side dish, it will be perfect is one dish and you can check off your list so that's what i'm doing so i'm gonna be scooping it out very easily um do you want to show us yours um Aslan? yeah absolutely so we're going to start this recipe i call it butternut roasted butternut squash with spicy basil oil and we're going to start with making a basil oil Ooh. we've got some we've got some olive oil the idea is the idea is flavoring the olive oil that we're going to be firstly roasting the squash with. And then after, we'll, we'll reserve a little bit at the, we'll reserve a little bit of the basil oil mm -hmm. and we'll be adding balsamic vinegar to the spicy oil. And then after the squash has been roasted, we're going to be drizzling our balsamic basil oil all over. So we've got some basil oil, a clove of garlic, small, big, doesn't really matter. So that's it, we're just going to dump that in there. And we've got some basil leaves. Oh, are you still having a basil in your garden? Because I know you were doing some I garden this summer. I bring them in. It's about, I mean, the, the past week, we've had temperatures that have dropped to two, two degrees Celsius. Um, oh. that, that's 
to above freezing. <laughs> so, yes. so I, I basically bring them in at this time of the year. So many of my chili plants have come in as well. So a little bit of basil and um, some fresh chilies or chili flakes. It really doesn't matter. And a little bit of oil, oil, a little bit of salt. And then all we're going to be doing is squashing this and leaving that aside. So crushing the garlic, crushing the basil, and uh -huh. crushing the salt. Now, really, what I should have done was <laughs> crush the garlic, the basil, the salt, and the chilies before putting the olive oil in. As soon as I dumped the olive oil in, I, I went, oh, oh, no, my live show will continue as if nothing went it, wrong. You know, <laughs> it, the wonderful thing about live shows is because things like this, it happened on our own cooking too, in our own house. And it's just, you know, the, the in, the perf imperfection of perfections, you know, some things happen. So yeah, so that's, that's, well, that's it. That's the basil oil. So what you do is crush the garlic, the salt, the chilies, as well as the basil leaves in there. And then we, we, we will fill it in, fill the um, olive oil in and leave that to just, you know, mingle away for the flavors to mingle away while you prep the squash, my most hated job in the world. <laughs> Now, I have a question for you on your basil oil. Can we make extra and save it? And if we can't, how long can we save it? You could make it the day before. Mm -hmm. I would suggest the day before because the basil leaves are fresh. Basil leaves are going to start going off. And garlic, you know, has a reputation of not being too friendly in terms of bacterial growth and so on although it is olive oil so you could make it the day before or you know make it a few hours before and leave it aside no need to place it in the fridge just keep it out and cover it okay so so for all of us here in the united states which will be going to be making that recipe here because it's absolutely delicious so we can actually make the oil the night before and cut down on, yeah, the, on a good five, 10 absolutely, minutes of work. Absolutely. Wonderful. But, if, but if truth be told, it's a two minute job. So, you know, it doesn't really yeah. take too long. Yeah. I know, but sometimes, you know, but with the Thanksgiving, at least we have so much going on. So it's nice yeah. to have us much out of the way prior to it. It makes One life so less. much simpler. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So why that into it? And you're going to, are you going to tackle your butternut? I suppose I have to, don't I? <laughs> but are you, well, I don't are you uh, do, do I do this or are you continuing with your recipe? Well, actually, I am almost finished here just cutting my little um, squash. And what I did, I cut them on little wedges, as you can see. Okay. So now what the only thing I have to do with this, I mean, this is very complicated. I have to take some oil and my recipe says for two tablespoons. So you put it on the bottom of a regular cutting, you know, cookie sheet. Put two tablespoons of oil. And you know, then just kind of cover it. And you take your little cut, you put it one side, turn them over. Rub one side, turn it over, and so on and so forth. So that's all I have to do before I put it on a preheated oven, which was at 400 degrees, uh, on for 20 minutes. After 10 minutes, you kind of turn them and then you put them, um, you just cook for another 10 minutes, and that's it. So that's us. That's all I have to do with this part of my job so far. Oh. And then I will start my vinaigrette. So you want to yeah. you want to so show how to cut yours? Butternut squash, as you can see, it, 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 tapers, um, it tapers wide at the bottom. You have a bulbous end, so to speak. So to, to attack a butternut squash, all you need to do is essentially cut it at the top of the bulbous bit. And the seeds and the stringy bits are all in here. They're not at the top. So you split it, scoop the seeds out. The top, you're just going to slice, dice, whatever you want to do. So let's cut our butternut squash. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna put my little guys, as you can see, in the oven. Now, in preparation for this, doing this live, I sharpened my knife. Did you really? You know, people don't understand, but a very unsharpened knife is an extremely dangerous little item. Yeah. Yeah. So here's our, here's our slice, our, our cut um, butternut squash. 
So you can't actually see the um, seeds and, and stringy bits. It's just underneath the flesh. Um, so it really depends on how high or how low you split the squash. So all you need to do is to slice this in half. There we are. So just like Jianji did, all I'm going to do is essentially scoop everything out, all the seeds out and all the stringy bits out and end up with a smooth flesh. Like, uh, for here, all we need to do is just slice it into wedges, just like Jianji did. Right. Perfect. So and, we got, and then we, uh, with mine, I have to keep the skin on because this, when it cooks, it gets soft, so the skin helps it keep it all into shape. Well, I am the next part of my very busy recipe here is very simple. I have to make a vinaigrette, and the vinaigrette is two tablespoons of olive oil. So this time I measure it actually. Actually, it's three tip, uh, three tablespoons. Sorry. Now with this wonderful vinaigrette, uh, you can make more and you can actually save it. That's what I usually do with it, okay? And then you, I two, the juices of two lemons, I already squeezed them so I can just put them in. And by the way, Aslan, going live, it gave me the opportunity to use my little things. I'm a gadget person and I found this in an antique shop and I love it. So I had wow. to have it, so I'm like, oh, I'll use it. It's a cute little depression glassware who has a three, Ooh. four, I just loved it. I was like, oh no, I'm using it. <laughs> cool. And then, three tablespoons of honey. And this makes a lot of vinaigrette. However, it stays, it, it really stays in the refrigerator and is not only delicious with this, the squash, you can put it over roasted, um, any roasted vegetable, broccolis, um, cauliflowers, you name it, it's delicious, absolutely. Delicious. Put in there before mixing it all up. That's it. I know this is a very big plate for it, but okay. So my vinaigrette is all done. The only part you have to make sure is that the honey is well dissolved with it. So you got to whisk it a little bit along the side there, and that's it. This is my vinaigrette. We don't put salt in it. We put salt on top of the, of the squash. There you go. My little vinaigrette is all done. So the only thing I need to do is take out my, um, my squash, uh, dip them in, put them into a plate, and I'm up with a little bit of salt and I'm done. Okay, cool. And your... Um... So what went in the vinaigrette again? On the vinaigrette, it went two uh, lemons juiced, then I have juice, three tablespoons of olive oil, and I don't use um, the extra virgin, I use a lighter version to it, it's just personal choice, and three tablespoons of honey. I, I, we have a lot of wonderful honey in Arizona, so I, I, get, I, I have an orange-infused um, honey. Okay. Okay, so this part of my job is done. The only thing I have to do is pull out my, my roasted and um, putting it together and I'm done. Cool. So How are you doing? I've got the, um, the base of the butternut squash in wedges. Ooh, so uh, uh, we, we would be doing the same thing with the top part also, but I'm going to be lazy and ignore that. And uh, right. so here we've got our butternut squash wedges. So before we started everything, we would have um, preheated the oven to 220 degrees Celsius. That's 425 Fahrenheit to mm -hmm. 200 fan for those of you who've got fan ovens. So okay. we've got our butternut squash wedges and remember our basil oil. So what we're yeah. going to be doing is we're going to be drizzling Oh. The flavored oil all over, and then reserving a little bit of it in there. There would be about five tablespoons for the whole butternut squash, five tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. We've got one clove of garlic, about a quarter to half teaspoon of salt, depends on how salty you love mm -hmm. your food. And we've got a little bit of fresh chili or chili flakes, 
and we've got basil leaf. That's it. You could even, instead of chili flakes or fresh chili, use a smoked paprika, whether it's paprika dolce or pa paprika picante, spicy or sweet, that's completely up to you. So okay. here we go. So we've got this, so we're just going to be mixing this, essentially rubbing your olive oil, flavored olive oil, and grab your garlic and make sure that your garlic gets it's there. Uh. all over. And then we are going to be roasting that in a pretty hot oven, very hot oven, for about 30 minutes. How quickly okay. it's done depends on how ripe your squash is to begin with. So 30 minutes is a good average on either side. If you've got a stubborn squash, you may even have to go all, all the way to 40 or 45 minutes. So we're going to place that in the oven. Now, do you have to turn in between cooking? Mm, One is in the oven. Yes, do you ideally halfway, but oh, I'm too lazy to do that. <laughs> so I just, I just leave it, leave it to cook. So that's it. That's it. Okay, great. Well, I'll take mine out. Okay, we, 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 I actually baked another one, okay, just for everybody to know we, we're not fast forwarding time here. But so here they are, perfectly done, all nicely roasted. I'm going to bring a little closer so you can see. All righty, so the only thing we have to do is put a little bit of salt over it. Now I'm generous with the salt, but it's up to you. Um, some people like to put pepper, I don't particularly care for it. And then you just pretty much toss them and put them in the in the vinaigrette, toss them with it and just put it on the serving plate right here. Cool. Access. Right. Now, let me get let me get the tray of roasted squash that I did earlier. <laughs> we were prepared, guys, you know. <laughs> okay. So there oh. we go. So any Yummy. browned crispy bits only add to the sweet caramelized flavor that you're going to get from butternut squash. So this is our final squash. Let me just place it there. You can just about see them. So shall I let you finish yours, Gian? You finish your serving yours and then I'll get to mine. Sure. Actually, it will take me just a second here. I'll just put this here like this. Get my little paper towel. Um, if you want to drizzle a little bit more soft vinaigrette over it, it's perfect. Just a little bit. Okay. And then what I like to do, let me just put this over here. Put a tap bit. I have still have some fresh herbs outside. So I just put a little bit of thyme just over. But this is just me because I just enjoy little herbs. And then this is it. And you just kind of serve it for your Thanksgiving. It's all done. Yum. Come closer. There is also something, if you, uh, if you want to make this as a real meal, actually, what, uh, what I do, you can make some lentils, put them together, mix them all up as well. Also some feta cheese, just to kind of give you a variation. So you can have a vegetarian meal and just using the same and using this recipe has a base for a actual meal versus a side dish. So this is it. I'm all done with mine. Cool. And what do you call your recipe? It's called green acorn squash with honey vinaigrette. Excellent. So we've got roasted butternut squash over here in the United Kingdom. So you could you decide whether you want a bit of a sort of ele or elegant or neat, whatever you want to call it, a fair or a rustic affair. If you want a rustic affair, we've got burrata to serve this with. So you could take pinches of the burrata and just plonk it all over your squash and take it to the table. Or we could serve, take a serving plate and then take your burrata, place it in the middle, there. And you remember our basil oil earlier? Yes. So we, so yes. We, we reserved a little bit. We didn't use yes. all of it. So we're going to add 
a little bit, okay, maybe more than a little bit of balsamic vinegar, a tablespoon of good quality balsamic vin vinegar, but not necessarily one that breaks the bank, you know, fairly good yeah. quality. Not the sort you want to cook with, but the sort you want to serve with. So we're going to stir that, leave it aside. Now our roasted butternut squash. You notice that I didn't peel it. That's I right. left the peel on. Like Jandy, you didn't peel it either, did you? I did not, or it will be falling apart. So That's the, it. the the outside of I cannot say it in English all of a sudden. Uh, the the core outside, the skin, helps it to keep it all together. So it is actually very good when you eat it. You can scoop it out. It doesn't make a mess in your dish and in the plate also. So that's it. So so the skin is going to um, going to keep it keep the shape. If you want to cheat with this, you can buy ready diced or sliced butternut squash from the shops. Um, but then, of course, you're not you're not going to have full pieces to decorate them. You're going to essentially just have a rustic affair and and serve your burrata with um, alongside your wedges, your peeled, diced stuff that you bought skinless. Because from the shops, the chances are they're going to be skinless. So on my blog, this recipe is on my blog. Um, we will place a link on Gianji's YouTube channel, which is where this is being televised right now. Televised. Telecast? Yes, or? that's right. Broadcast. So well, we, Broadcast. So, Broadcast. Is just live streamed, actually. We are live streaming so, here. So on my blog, I call this the octopus look. So And it's gorgeous. And so it's been my favorite. Outside in the middle, and then we've got the wedges all over. So remember our balsamic, our basil oil that's been flavored further with balsamic vinegar. We're just going to drizzle that all around for a little bit more of an oomph. And then on my blog, I finished this off with pine nuts. You could mm. finish it with, you know, only because I was using burrata, I was using basil leaves. I thought, oh, all right, then pine nuts. But, but I, I actually, since then, I tend to top this with chia seeds. Because what about pistachios? That's how um, that was Yeah, how green pistachios would look good, whether, whether you want to have the, um, um, tiny slivers of it or chopped pistachios whatever up to you and um, cranberries the the sweet and sour cranberries oh will yes out the creamy and and sweet here so speaking of creamy burrata you could also skip the burrata and actually use um green cheese blue cheese green cheese I suppose yeah, still okay, green, <laughs> they? blue cheese or um, goat cheese, feta, whatever you like. So there is a lot so, of leeway. It's a well, the possibility, The possibilities are endless with those two recipes, literally, because what you're using there for yours, actually, that you can use it with the same thing with this, this acorn squash. Yes, I used a vinaigrette, which is a little lighter because you and I have two different cooking or more the spicy with gusto and I'm more like a plain Jane in this side, but... The, the, at the end of the day, it, the result is we can you can make your recipe and my recipe and combine it with all the wonderful suggestions that you made with feta cheese, with lentils, with anything to, to it as a make it as an everyday dish, pretty much too. If you if you decided to go yeah. in that direction too, That's so right. um, like Aslan say, the two links of our two recipe will be underneath it. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, please um, put them down on the comment. We would love to get back to you and, on that. And um, so we are going to have another segment next week. And are we going to share what we're going to do? Or are we going to keep it as yeah. a surprise? Yeah. Go ahead. Let's do that. Right. So so, so today we did squash as a, as a side dish as for Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever. In fact, I'm thinking I'm going to do this for, for Christmas. And um, so next week we're doing cranberries, aren't we? Aren't yes, we are. Because we like, are doing hey, what it's, Thanksgiving it's a... and Christmas without without cranberries. Well, Thanksgiving um, without cranberry is not Thanksgiving at all. <laughs> yeah, because like she says Thanksgiving, I say Christmas. So, <laughs> but you know what? I mean, it's three weeks eight, apart. <laughs> seven weeks. Seven weeks to Christmas. No, it's actually anyway. we are forty-eight days to Christmas, and we are two weeks, two and a half weeks away from Thanksgiving because it's the fourth Thursday of every November. Yeah. So, yeah. so cranberry, 
And so, so we were saying too. cranberry. So what I what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do with you guys is that every for years and years and years now, I'm so much into homemade gifts at this time of the year. Uh, other times of the year, I just buy them. But Christmas time, it's always homemade food gifts. So one of the things that I got into in the last 10 years is making homemade infused liqueurs. So on my blog, you'll find cool slow gin, this vodka, that vodka, that gin. Oh, and right now, proofing away, we've got yet more limoncello. We've got passion flower uh, liqueur, which is pasoa, and um, rose liqueur too. But next week, I want to do a cranberry gin with you. So we will have five weeks, which is probably the minimum amount of time you want it to, to, to proof. Four weeks is the minimum amount of time. Decant it. Give it away at Christmas. And you don't want to miss it because I have made your recipe last year and I have some girlfriend who can vouch is to die for. I still have a little bit and it will be just like I need to redo it. So please, you guys stay tuned because that recipe is absolutely to die for. And what are you what are you making with your cranberries? Well, I'm going to be making my basic cranberry sauce, which I've made every year for the last something, something and every year. 30 plus, 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 plus. And every year I add something different to it. But the wonderful thing, you can save it. You can put it on cute little jars, host this gift, or you can be the, if somebody asks you, can you bring something for Thanksgiving? You'll be the one volunteering because it takes less than 20 minutes to make delicious, fast, simple, easy. And it has a lot of uh, um, apricot and raisins Ooh. and uh, orange fresh orange juice squeezed on it so it's really it's a lot of fun fresh cranberries and um but it's like like Aslan say it's a great little gift that's a perfect little gift to give to a friend or also to bring as a all this gift too so i'm really really looking forward to that it's apricot cranberry it sounds oh. really really good and raisin and it is just like mm. Yeah, everybody has been loving it for the last 30 something years. And it's kind of a little tidbit. I've made it and I'm not a cranberry fan. It's the only cranberry actually I eat. When I first moved to the United States, I had cranberry and I went, <clears throat> I'm not <laughs> eating this thing because it came out of a can. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> so throughout the years, I learned how to make cranberry. And so that's the one. So, so uh, guys, um, I think this kind of pretty much set up our session today. Thank you so ever much, everyone, to join us. Thank you very much for liking this. Please share it with your friends and please do enjoy our squash. So catch you guys next you, weekend. See you next weekend, uh, six o'clock England time, Greenwich time, 11 o'clock mountain time. So bye guys, thank you.